So our guest today, um, Pablo, oh, he, we'll, we'll get, we'll, yeah. he, he, he just, you know, I, so long story short, I got his number from my, my mother. She runs a, a health clinic in South Africa and he's one of her clients. And she told mm. me, you know, he's the, he's the first guy, like the first Spanish guy to get the, the COVID vaccine back in 2020. Mm. And I thought, oh, this is a little, oh, look it up. And then a she bit said, shady. Yeah, a little yeah. bit too good to be true. The first Argentine in South Africa yeah, to, get to get the COVID the vaccine, vaccine. The AstraZeneca yeah. vaccine. And then um, this apparently made worldwide news. Like, like Lee actually went and looked him up. Um, and yeah, it was, he, he has, this gentleman has taught theater school to kids in South America. Yeah, I mean, we, we just got plays. Off, off the phone with him and it was an experience. It was a beautiful... He, he broke my heart. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he spoke so much about his personal life, his losses with family and, and spouses and and um, how he's, um, you know, gone and done this, obviously the, the vaccine yeah. to protect... Yeah people that he never could have protected before in his life yeah because he was too young yeah and i didn't i thought it was just a guy that you know writes scripts sometimes and yeah. you know has got a jab and my mom just happened to be you know one of his she he's one of her clients now this guy was a, a flash in the pan yeah he just he just kept the iceberg just kept unraveling man there was so much beneath the surface i mean i had fun so i guess without any further ado today is Pablo Andres Pera, the first person to get the jab. The first Argentine. The first Spanish South man. South American man. In South yeah. Africa <laughs> to yeah. get the jab. My name is Llewellyn Fisso. My name is Ronald Lee. And this is Finding Borders. Bada bing. Bada boom. Roll intro. Season one, episode six. <laughs> Hey, Pablo, how you going? This, this is this is my other host, Lee. Pablo. Hey, Lee. How you going? I'll just come into the room. He went, got a notepad. Okay. He looks like he's got a, a world's questions written on it for you. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you seem like a very interesting man, Pablo. I'm, I'm excited to meet you. It's a pleasure. Okay, it's a pleasure too. Lee, Llewellyn, your name is difficult for me. Eh? Um, so a lot of people, Pablo, in, in Australia call me Louis. You can call me Louis if that's easy for you. Okay, okay. Yeah, call me Louis. That's fine. Louis, there's a there's a figure in Australia called Louis the Fly. So, <laughs> um, okay. Oh, so Pablo, I wanna. So my my mother told me something, and um, I actually ended up reading about it. Um, so apparently, you you got a dose, an experimental vaccine dose from the University of Oxford. Yes. At, at from wit. the from the at wit, yeah. from the AstraZeneca laboratory. So you were. Were you one of the first people, or one of the first Argentinians to receive this dose? Is that correct? In fact, I was the first Spanish guy. And I post a photo in Instagram and some journalist from, I can't remember the country, saw it. And so he called me, or he, he did a, an interview that, that day. I don't tell even my wife in that moment, anyone, that I'm doing that. But this guy saw the photo, so he phoned me. He, yeah, he interviewed me. I can't remember if he phoned me or what. So it was in the news at the following day. Mm. And from that following day, a lot of media started calling me because, I, yeah, I was the first Spanish guy to receive a, a vaccine. Mm. So they called from Spain and different countries in South America. And also... Uh, France, China, Russia, I don't know, everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been the first guy. Was it very nice having all the attention? It was horrible at the beginning. Yeah. I, I yeah. didn't like it. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, I never liked too much interviews. In fact, yeah. I used to work with media before in Argentina for a couple of international agencies for 
one from Venezuela and another Reuters that is famous in, in all over the world. Yeah. But never in front of the camera. So that was my first time. And and it was like every minute falling and falling. So I put the first day I put the the phone inside the microwave. That's so the phone. To sleep. <laughs> <laughs> did you, you put did you say you put your phone in the microwave? Yeah, inside the microwave I put the the, the cell phone. Too much, it's like every minute, the, the, yeah. the difference of power, you know. Yeah, yeah. South America is five hours ahead, so yeah. I, I don't know. Two in the morning here, it was like ten, I think, yeah. in PM there. So they were calling one, two, three in the morning. Uh, it was too much uh, exposition. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I didn't like it at the beginning. Then, like, like one two months later, I start to get used to. Yep. And now I'm showing, I just do it yesterday, they phoned me from some TV channel and the day before from some radio. Oh, so they you still get calling. calls from the media. Yeah, but if the, but now I, I just have fun, but at the beginning I, I didn't like it at all, no, it was too much. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And now you, you also say, Pablo, that you were involved in the media some time ago now, were you? Oh, yeah, yeah I, I lead... found, um, uh, did you make a documentary? Yeah, men, men without land. Oh, I did. I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, he's, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's gone. He's gone. And <laughs> I, I just said to him, um, you know, who we'll be doing a, our next interview with. And, you know, he, he came back to me two, three days later. And yeah, yeah. He had your whole autobiography no. <laughs> on a piece of paper, Pablo. It was insane. Yeah. It, it, it was a, yeah, a, a long movie. It was one hour and 30 yeah. about... Exactly that man without lands. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. In fact, before I used to write for the drama for the theater, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a play. Yeah, I did a play about that problem: the the, the people who fight for their lands. Yeah, and and it's a big issue in South America that yeah, 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 yeah. other people from Europe buy the lands. And so who has the right for the land? So the people who live there or the people who buy the land and have the paper, the property. So it's a big thing there. A play for theater yeah, yeah, about yeah. this problem. Yep. And, and and it went well. It, it, it got some awards in, in South America. It, was, it, it worked very well. So after that, because I learned, I read too much about this problem, yeah, I decided to do the, the movie, yeah. Yeah. It was that that you, that's where you, you you live in Santiago? Was it that local region that you did the the documentary on? Yeah, that yeah, that documentary I did in different uh, places in Argentina, especially in Santiago. Santiago yeah. del Estero is a, 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 a province in the north of Argentina, very hot. I must say, 57, 60 degrees, like that. Yeah, very yeah. hot. I, I want to ask: Are the Santiago's uh, lazy? I read an article. There was a whole, yeah, yeah. There was an article. Of, of, it was titled "Are the uh, Santiago's Lazy?" Uh, the people are lazy in, in in places like that. That is too much hot. For example, there are the people who work from seven to eleven yeah. in the morning, and then from five p.m. to nine p.m. You can't go to work at twelve, at one, two p.m. because. Yeah. Too much hot. Yeah, yeah. So that way they call yeah. it lazy. In fact, like they are not lazy. Of course, you can't work with 55 degrees. Yeah. It's too much. So oh. it, uh, that way they say they're not lazy. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, no, I read an, read an article. Yeah. It, it was Google translated. So a lot of it was, um, wasn't translated properly. But I read an article where the, the oh, total okay. one was, yeah, it, it said, Are Santiago's uh, lazy? And it was talking about... Yeah, like, no, 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 but it's true, it's true. There's a lot of shows about Santiagueños, yeah. people from Santiago, because of the laziness they are, they are very lazy and this and that. But yeah, there, yeah. There is, that's the explanation. It's too much hot. I went to Santiago last year, January, the yeah. worst month to visit Santiago. Yeah. And I was sat in a, in a room. I didn't want to go out anywhere because it was... Too much hot, and I said I will never come back here yeah, yeah. <laughs> in, in summer. Did you go back to see family in Santiago? Yeah, because my parents live there. We are from yeah, we are from Buenos Aires. Yeah. But my parents, my father, when when I was three years old, yep. Uh, the the company sent him to work to Santiago, so we went all together. 
Uh, that's he why was... I did primary school and high school there in Santiago, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You must have it been difficult dealing with all those summers. I went b- very young, three years old, so I got yes. used to the heat. Yep. But then I, when I finished high school, I went to Buenos Aires back yep. to study at the university, and then I didn't go back in summer for 20 years to Santiago, only winter, to visit my family. Yeah, so yeah. I, uh, I, I wasn't used again to the, to the heat. <laughs> So uh, last year was the first time in 20 years, I think, that yeah. I went back at his summer, and it was horrible, horrible, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> in the night, you yeah. can... No, it was terrible. I just couldn't sleep in the night. Yeah, I want to go next year again, but yeah. I will go in, in winter for sure. So what, what bring your father up to Santiago? What, what sort of work was your father doing that made him move that far? Yeah, he, went, he, he worked in the bank. He's old now, he's retired. But oh, okay. the, yeah, the yeah. bank uh, sent him there. They constantly do, yeah, you go to one place and to another place. And mm. then, uh, okay, that was his last place. And that's why we all moved the family to, to Santiago yeah. uh, del Estero. Yeah. It's, it's not even a nice place. It's, it's because of the weather. It, it, yeah. You don't have a nice place to go and visit because all is like brownish without plants. Mm. Uh, it's not a nice place. It's no, huge, yeah. but it's not a nice place. Dry. But okay, they have this problem, the, the land problem, yeah. with a lot of foreign going there and buying the lands. Yeah. Why, why do they buy the land? Do they buy the land for like plantations, food oh, plantations, or? Yeah, yeah, to, yeah. That's what they do. They do soya because it's, it's, it's ah. very easy to, to to plant soya there. Yeah, for and the they cattle. sell it to England to other countries overseas. Yeah. And yeah. But then they have that problem, the people who live there. And the yeah. people who live there, they live for generations, and no one has ever buy the property. So they don't have the paper, the, the legality of... Uh, they are not owner, but they are owner by generations, that's what they said. Mm. So it's a big issue with that fighting that, okay, I bought the land, it's mine, so mm. go out to the people there. The mm. people say, no, mm. my great-grandparent we're living here, so it's our. Yeah. Ah, so, yeah. yeah. So it, my, my movie is more about what to do if you have that problem, uh, because there are some laws that protect you if you have the land for over 20 years. Is that is that so you can no, push no, no. the people out or so they can stay? There, there's another issue there. The people are very poor people, so mm. they know they have the right to have the land and go to the government and say, okay, I've been here for more than 20 years, mm. and they can prove it. But if you prove the land is yours, you have to start paying taxes and this ah. and that. And they don't want to do that. Ah, uh, yes. So it's a big issue yep. with the NCOs that helping them, the, the farmers, to, to have the land back. Because on the other hand, the NCO is a very true thing, no? Mm. I, I'm not... I'm very objective with it, uh, with this uh, topic. I'm not in the favor of the people who bought the lands or neither with the people who, who are living there because both are not doing the thing right. Mm. The people who live there, they have to work in the land yeah. and uh, make a profit and pay the taxes yeah. to the government and, and this, and they don't want to do that. They yeah. want it for free, yeah. not doing anything. So, so it's... That's the thing that they don't want, and the NCOs who helping them, they, in fact, they are not helping because if they help and they have the land, the NCOs lost their job, the, the, the money they receive from overseas, you understand? So they are not really helping them. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. So it's a big thing, uh, like any topic, no? There are mm. pros and cons both sides. Was it? No, so I, I, I tried. To be objective, and, and, and I wasn't very. Uh, the people didn't like me too much because yeah, yeah. the way I treat the uh, topic, saying, okay, you're doing yeah. wrong, and we'll do it. Yeah. Well, I read, I read in one of the articles um, regarding your documentary, there was an explosive that was put underneath. Uh, something about an explosive. Yeah, yeah, they, they put a. Yeah, a. a, a something under my truck yeah. and in the middle what? of the night and some neighbors saw it and they called the fireman and the police. 
so the the activate that it's not a bomb but like I don't know something that you light it on, on, uh, on top fuse? and it go with the fire like in the, in the cartoons to that yeah like a bottle fuse? full of pepper something like that I don't know the name yeah yeah, yeah so they they put like um they they essentially just lit lit like a little fire or something under your yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. They would, yeah, yeah they would. And, the, what? and yeah, they put some paper on the window, say they're gonna kill me, and they used to phone me and say, yeah. oh, they're wow. gonna kill yeah. me. Were they locals or farmers who were sort of threatening you like that? I think that part is, is more about the um, the government because mm. I was doing also a theater play for kids about the kids' rights. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, the the main character was the governor of that place, who was a crazy, still alive woman, oh. and very a dictatorial woman. Yeah. So when I wrote that story, it was about Nina. Nina is the name of this lady whose husband died, and he was the governor. And the main character was he used to talk sing weird funny things and I, I i i did that in the main character of this display for kids and mm. yeah so it was the, the government didn't like it because no. of course I, I was making fun of the main uh, politician in, yeah. in the town in santiago yeah they threatened your law yeah 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 now i'm making a movie with that uh, topic because that play was i don't know 20 years ago i can't remember when yeah was it. yeah i found your old website and, yeah. No, I'm rewriting the story. I'm writing it again, oh, but for yeah. a movie, so I could. Okay, so what? Then what are you going to to call this play that's going to be turned into a movie? Yeah, I don't know yet. I have a name, but I don't like it. The, <laughs> it's help me, somebody kidnap my kid, something like that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Now, and, and will it be? Will it be in um in English? This this movie of yours, or will it be you know in yes. English? Yes. English? Yes, yes, in English. I will send you the script as soon as I yeah, finish. Yeah, that'd, that'd, be, that'd be really cool. That yeah. would be amazing. Yeah. I'd like uh, to, uh, to. And um, so what I'm what I'm curious about, Pablo, is um, so how did you actually end up in South Africa? So you've, you're obviously um, in South America and um, somewhere along the spectrum you would have met your wife or your partner and, yes. um, and then ended up in South Africa, you know, and going, you know, going to my, my mother's clinic where, you know, I heard of you. So, um, yeah, yeah. how did you go from A yeah, that, to B to C? Yeah, that was in 1989. Uh, I read in the news that they were looking for non, it was a program from Israel of non-Jewish people to work in a farm, in a kibbutz. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, so I, in that moment, I, I, I wasn't happy in my work. I said, oh, I will try for one year. I will go to Israel to work yeah. in a kibbutz. So I went there and uh, I used to work in another kibbutz, in a factory, and in, in some huge farm there collecting uh, oranges, I think it was, uh, yeah. you know, or something like that. Okay. So, so what's a, so, um, a kibbutz? Yeah, so in a kibbutz, yeah. In that little farm in the middle of Israel. Okay, nice. yes. Yeah, you, know, you met a lot of people, uh, volunteers from all over the world. Yes, backpackers and so on. But, yeah, it was nice, nice experience. So I remember one, I was with a group of South American people and in a huge, huge restaurant that we used to go eating every day. Yeah. And I saw a lady with a beautiful smile uh, coming in with another guy, a South African yeah. guy. So I saw her smile and I, I remember I told the guys who were with me that I'm going to marry that lady. <laughs> oh. <laughs> classic. Yeah. Classic she story. Yeah. Me. She didn't look at me. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. there was this, this South African scene that I didn't know that very close friends kiss each other like mouth to mouth. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's but very... we don't have that in South America. That is, you only do it with your <laughs> it's partner, a... your, your Yeah, wife. very, very <laughs> close. <laughs> very close culture. Lots yeah. of hugging and kissing and yeah. very passionate. Yeah, but to me it was a shock. So I said, no, 
<laughs> she's with somebody else. I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Um, so she was saying goodbye to to a guy from South Africa. She was a South African lady. Okay. Oh. Well, and okay. With yeah, we start dating and 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 we decide to to be together. But she was Hindu South Africa. Okay, so was she part Indian South African? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was Indian South African. But in that moment, 1999, we want to be together, but I wasn't allowed to come to South Africa being a white person. Mm. Yeah, because so, of apartheid. Yeah. So we tried to find a way to be together, but we couldn't in South Africa. So it was a big thing. So eventually, one year later, she started the war there in the Middle East. Yeah. Mm. The, um, a couple of bombs all there where we were but close so she decided to go back to South Africa and I went back to Argentina in that moment there was there was no, there was an internet so yeah, they were writing write letters oh, yeah snail mail. A, that was our first story for for few years then she met a guy and she decided to be with this guy and, oh. and we stopped writing each other yeah okay so yeah but uh, I I looked for her for twenty years. I was just trying to. I need to find her because I was deeply in love. Wow. Eventually, she opened a Facebook account. I used to write to everyone who has the same surname to see years. if they know her in South Africa. What? Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, <laughs> so she opened an account, a Facebook account. And I wrote, and she said, just come now, she said. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Pablo, 20 and, years. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking for her for 20 years. Yeah. So we got married a month later, and oh. yeah, we were together well. for 20 years. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Okay, then she, the, the sad story, she got some pancreas cancer last year, February, yeah. and she passed away no. in August last oh. year. Oh. I'm so sorry. Oh, my condolences, Pablo. I, you know, I, I. Yeah, it's just such a, it's just such a beautiful story of what you've told me now. Yeah. You, I, maybe it's just the way you narrate because you've had experience writing scripts, but um. Or maybe it's, it sounds so much more romantic from a Spanish person. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's just so authentic. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> but uh, no, that that's we're we're sorry to hear that, Pablo. Yeah, no, that's you know, I I can't, I wouldn't w- wish that upon my worst enemy. Yeah. Having to lose family mm. and someone close to you like that. And, and part of the story, when when we uh, got married, we came to one house. The the lady who was our witnesses when we got married, uh, the, she 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 gave us a house for a couple of months in in December nineteen ninety nine. Yeah. Here in so we love that place, and we always want to buy that house. Yeah. And and I. I, I don't know. We tried to buy for all these uh, those twenty years, yeah. And then I, I could finally got it that house that we planned to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I bought it four months ago here in Glen. And that's why I am close to George, where um, your mother is. I moved here four months ago. Yeah, no, that's beautiful, Pablo. Yeah. Did you did you share any children together? No, we don't have any kids. No, 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 we don't want. That's a beautiful story. That's a. Uh... You should do a movie just on that, Pablo. Yeah, it's very inspirational. I don't know. I like to, to write, but it's difficult to write about yourself. I, yeah. I, a lot of people told me because a lot of things that happen in, in my life and, and, and everyone say, hey, you have to write. There's a journalist from Colombia. I think that he keeps calling and say, Pablo, write about your life. Mm. But it's difficult to write about yourself. I, I don't know if I can. Oh. Yeah, it's easy to talk about other people's and write about that, but but oneself, I don't know. It's yeah, it's hard when the it. it's hard when the ball is sort of in your court. You know, it's easy to mm. to point mm. a finger and create these artificial characters who play a role in the movie. But um, yeah. if if you made a movie about mm. you know Pablo, then um, you know you 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 don't really know where to begin. I take it, or you don't know how much you want to tell your audience because it's it's it's, yeah. it's you now. It's it, it, and and obviously it comes maybe in some sense it comes off as being narcissistic, where you you like talking about yourself a little too much. So I suppose it's finding I, I, a balance. 
I'm painful, yeah, I'm painful because there are a lot of things that hurt, like yeah. when you lost your wife or, yeah, so it's the, like living again that thing that hurt you too much. So I think it's difficult. I, 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 when I was nine, I lost my twin sister. Oh, oh, oh and, okay. And that has a relation, that has a relation to the, the vaccines because you know, it's very psychological, every, everything, no? Yeah. And it's, one day somebody was was asking me why I, I, I was a volunteer for something that nobody knows what was about, this this uh, COVID vaccine. Yeah, it yeah. was real. So I thought a lot about that, and, and it has a relationship with the death of my sister, my twin sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, it's, it's very psychological because it's like somehow I couldn't help her in that moment. I was nine years old, of course yeah. you can help her, but a nine years old doesn't realize that. So that's why after that you just try to help others constantly. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. very selflessly go and you know protect others by getting you know the jab, and exactly. Yeah. And yeah, you, I mean. You know, I, I'm very close to my sister as well. And, you know, I can't, if I had to do something like that to protect her or to, you know, keep her safe, then yeah. it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a thought. It would be instinct. You know, I would definitely exactly. act yeah. out of love. You act, you know, lo yeah. love yeah, makes sure. you, love makes you do a lot of crazy things, Pablo. Um, yeah. as, a, as a young man and as you were a young man, at that time, when you met your, your beautiful wife, like <laughs> you just do crazy things. Yeah, twenty years. Yeah, yeah. that's amazing. That's, now, um, do you believe you'll stay in South Africa, Pablo, or is there after after you know the pandemic seems to decrease and you can go overseas and things? Do you think you'll go overseas again and finish your story? Or I'm, I don't know. I, I really don't know. It's, I I I. I miss my parents too much. You know, it's difficult now. You can just fly. You, yeah. If I want to go to Argentina, I have to go to Amsterdam. The embassy told me the other day they, they took out all the plane from Africa to South America. I used to go through Angola and Brazil. It was a long trip, but now I have, I have to go to Amsterdam to go to to South America. It's, it's, it's crazy. So... Um, yeah, I, 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 for, I want, I would like to, to go there, but to stay, I don't know. I like this place, Krenkel. I always like South Africa too much. Yeah. and this is a paradise. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It's a very small town. It's like 300 meters times 500 meters. It's a very small town, but yeah. a beautiful one. One block from the Indian Ocean here is the... Where you can see dolphins and yeah. whales. I don't know. I Sounds love like this place. Yeah. yeah. Uh, not to sound oh. biased. I don't know. It's a don't beautiful know. country, South Africa. Yeah, oh. yeah. Oh, South Africa is beautiful. Wherever you go, it's beautiful. <laughs> uh, maybe in 10 years, I may go back to Argentina. I don't know. But now I want to stay for, yeah, for a while. What do you do with yourself now, Pablo? What's your. What's your? Do you, are you employed? Like, do you, what do you do for a living? Yeah, I used to have a school, a Montessori school, with my wife, yeah. and I closed it on this, in December last year after she passed away. Ah, but yeah, some parents asked me to go on with the teaching thing with the kids, mm. so I'm still teaching uh, via Zoom, but I, I I prefer to stop doing that. I like the writing thing. So I'm busy doing that movie uh, the, for kids, yeah. and and I build a house at the back of my house. So I want to do some Airbnb from oh, next month. Yeah. So that should be my incoming from next month. Yeah, yeah. If you see my house now, it's like Vietnam. It's, it's no <laughs> floors, it's the yeah. cement everywhere. Yeah. Hey, Horribly, but <laughs> it's a work in progress. Uh, I, yeah, no, no. But tomorrow is to Saturday and Sunday. Come in some guy to finish the floor. Yeah. So I almost done. The other house is finished. So I think from in two weeks I can start 
doing the Airbnb. Airbnb. No, that's so good. that's yeah. going to be my income. Until December, I still teach it. So, yeah, you, you seem to be very, very passionate about uh, teaching, Pablo, like, you know, um, fostering the, the youth. Um, have, you, have you ever in your life, um, you know, gotten like, like a qualification at, in, in teaching or have you just decided that, you know, you, no, no. you want to help yeah. children? No, I, I studied to be a teacher in Santiago when I was there, okay. but, but I, I never practiced. I was never a teacher. Teacher, I just have the qualification. But mm. in one day, I moved back to my house in Buenos Aires, and some friends showed me a piece of paper that uh, from the municipality saying that they teaching the they were doing uh, cinemas uh, classes about how to write scripts and this yeah. and that. So I decided to go just to to see what was that about, and I love movies, so mm. I did uh, the four or five years of a uh, movie director, so I, I, I got a degree of movie director, and then that way I started, uh, I did that movie we talked at the beginning, that documentary, and, and some short movies more, yeah. I prefer the, the writing scene, not the uh, writing the script, I, yeah. I love that, that part of the movie, I, I I, I direct some theater plays and I wrote some theater plays, but the the part I m- most like is the writing part. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All the all the background you stuff. Know? And um, yeah. And then not what... to deal with actors and producers is too much problem. Yeah. I like. I am very lonely. I prefer to do that. The the writing part only. What do you like to see yourself as like the. Um, the archetype of the like the like the like the, the like the tortured writer you know what i mean like the the writer um like was it you, you seem like you have the, the 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 life of a writer of a famous writer living by the sea and in a, in a country away from your homeland in a small little town oh this yeah that yeah. This, this place is the best yeah it's so quiet and nice you, mm. you, this place is the best to write uh, you wake up in the middle of the night thinking Apparently you're dreaming with your script and yeah. you say, oh, I can do the, the character and then yeah. I just jump on the bed and write a little bit more because I'm stuck in one part of, the, of this, this uh, uh, I hope, future movie. Yeah. Uh, and and sometimes, I don't know, you're just sleeping and, and the idea just come. Yeah. So you yeah. just jump and write it down and say, oh, finally, I know what's going to happen now. Yep. Uh, yeah, this this place is the best. It's quiet and nice, and yeah. it's yeah. always the case that you always get the idea right when you're about to fall asleep. And you're like, oh bloody, I've got to get back up again <laughs> and write it down. Yeah, yeah. I find as a university student, Pablo, I find when you procrastinate yeah. and you, you you put something off for a little bit, then you get more creative. You think you have a few more exactly. ideas coming forward, and exactly you're being you're being more productive, not counterproductive. Yeah, no, that's totally true. Yeah, yeah. I have a, 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 there's a famous, Alejandro Agresti is a famous director from Argentina. He did one with Keanu Reeves, one movie. And wow. another famous actress, the, the, the lake, the view in the lake, something about the lake with Keanu Reeves. And yeah, it was, a, it was a, a romantic movie, I think. Is that correct? Yes. Um, yes, yeah, that way. Uh, let, me, let me think of the... The name because Keanu Reeves he doesn't he doesn't play in a lot of romantic movies you know he's in the Matrix yeah, yeah. he's in um oh the Matrix is romantic isn't it well no, no. It, it's got a twist of love was yeah. it was it called um was yeah. it called Sweet November there's a could be yeah I can't remember it's called there's one it's called yeah. a Walk in the Clouds there's one it's called the Lake House. And then Sweet November. The Lake House. The Lake House. The Lake House. Was that in San Diego? Yeah. No, he worked with a director no. from San Diego. Oh, he worked with... No, oh. no, no. He, he, he was one of my teachers when I used to be a student, uh, oh. to be a movie director. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I remember he, he said a couple of things that I love. It. One is, okay, when you're stuck in your writing process that you don't know how to follow, just leave it, close it, and forget about that. Yeah. Like you were saying before. And then I don't know. In one moment, it's, it, it will everything come back to the to, to, to the way it should be. Mm. And and the other thing I like about him, 
is that in fact he was a, a, when he was a student he was he, he he just went a couple of classes to be a movie director but in the first year only one or two classes and the, the other kids make fun of him because yeah. of the way he was thinking and he wanted to do stuff so he he got upset with even the teacher make fun of him yeah. and so he decided to quit so he didn't study to be a movie director and in Argentina he did brilliant movies mm. this guy Alejandro Agresti but what 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 he, he was saying that he said that saying that he, that he, he didn't study so he didn't learn how to do so he experienced and when you experience something you don't know mm. there are two things or, or you're doing it all wrong or you're gonna work in a area that nobody uh, did before you understand that happened to him yeah so that that why he became famous uh, because he 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 direct movies in a different way he was like, unique not re- yeah not respecting the how you when you go to when you learn how to to i don't know shoot a movie mm. they teach you you have to put the camera like this you have to put 10 centimeters on top of the head. Mm. Uh, it's a lot of rules. So he broke all the rules because he didn't know. And yeah. thanks of that, he became a brilliant director. Mm, but yeah. okay, it, it can be, you can be like a disaster or a brilliant like he was, the Alejandro Eresti. So, oh, I love this guy. He was, he was one di- of the best teachers I ever had. Yeah, he yeah. was different. He was, he, he um, unconventional yeah. yeah he just he just learned for himself and he because you can you can give someone a textbook and you can say repeat this paragraph for me in an exam or you can yeah. like you said you can give someone a tripod and a camera and you can say well make a movie <laughs> you know what do you do how do yeah. i how do i make a movie if you just give me a camera and a tripod and i don't know what to do with them exactly no and, and he created the dogma no, no 95 that then the a lot of famous directors uh, uh, work in that dogma. Dogma 95 was the name. Uh, the, where you don't respect the rules that when you go to school, they teach you. You have to do this, 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 and this. Mm. And, and, and he was the first guy to create that. That was all about what, what he was saying. If this, in everything, no? if whatever your work is, there are gaps that nobody experienced before. So the best way is to experiment and do it. Most of the cases, you won't succeed. It's going to be or terrible what you do. Yeah. But it can happen that you create something new and, and yeah. then it, uh, yeah. you become some, somebody like this guy. How did you find yourself to become a student of uh, such a great director? Uh, the, no, what happened? I, I I didn't tell you so. I was at home, I remember, and uh, yeah. one guy came and, and and he brought this paper off. So just, I just went there to, to do something. I was working in Mastercard, you know, the cars at that moment. Yeah. I was horrible work because I had to go at ten in the night until six in the morning, yeah. just stamping paper. It was the most <laughs> horrible work I ever had. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to do something just to think about something different. So, uh, Luis, my friend, so I told Luis, let's go, let's do a uh, movie, let's, let's, let's learn about movies. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So, we went there, he quit, he didn't like it, and I go on. So I did uh, the first, I remember, I don't know, four months after, uh, yeah, so I did a, a, a movie in Quechua, in one aboriginal language. Wow. Yeah, it, 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 each one was, it's a language in South America. Ah, okay, that, yeah, uh, yeah, people, okay. That, yeah, there are people that still uh, talk in, 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 in Quechua, in yeah. Peru especially. But in the north of Argentina, you can find some uh, people who speak um, uh, Quechua. Quechua. Uh, the problem was when the Spanish come to conquer uh, South America, they forbid to talk Kichwa to the local people. Yes. So uh, slowly that um, language disappeared in most of the places. Mm. But anyway, there was a lesson about a lady that she became a bird because she wasn't good with her brother and her brother placed her 
on top of a tree and she couldn't go out, uh, down, so mm. she became a bird. So oh. it, um, it's a famous legend in South America, legend about Taku is the name. Okay. So wow. It's, okay. um, wow. what I like about this legend, that was my favorite word, what I like about this legend is this. In that moment, when the the, the local people create the lesson, yeah. it was it, it was about a girl who didn't want to have the, a sex, sexual relationship with the, the brother. Yeah. But in that moment, it was okay to have sexual relationship with somebody in your family yeah. because if in the middle of nothing in the countryside, middle of nothing, you don't have any neighbor, but far mm. away, so. It was part of the culture, let's say. Yep. But when the Spanish come, the Spanish, the conqueror come to South America, mm. they changed that lesson to a girl who didn't want to cook to his brother. You understand? Okay, oh, they, 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 they the twisted the story a little bit. Yeah. And then they, yes, and then they retaught yeah, that to the children. It. Ah. For Christ, yeah, for for Catholic, it's not right. It's, uh, uh, the the first the original lesson. So what I did is the original lesson, and 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 it worked nice. Well, that was my first work. It, it has some award in Mexico. I don't know. So I said, oh, this I like this. I said. Yeah. So that way I decided to go on studying, and 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 I finished. Um, and I didn't do the teaching part, but more the movie. Uh, stuff and theater and yeah that kind of stuff mm. it's more fun than it and then so you so you've only ever then worked on your your documentaries and your journalism um you haven't as of yet actually um made it to the big screens in hollywood no 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 i don't know how to <laughs> get there i don't, have no idea don't um, don't, don't like the media that. attention <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, I want. To, I would like to. Yeah, to with this script. It's coming nice. I like it. With this script, I start um, sending to competition, writing yeah. competition. So maybe it could be the chance to um, to do something. I I, I have a, a good hope with this. Yep. Yeah. The, um, the 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 one I'm, I'm doing now. So uh, the way I think is to send it to competitions and. And then see if we can get some award and then move forward. I don't know. No, yeah, it seems special to you. Yeah, yeah, I like it so much. There was some lady from SABC yeah. here in South Africa. Yeah, yeah she Africa was interested to, to do, she was there and she wanted to to transform the story in little chapter for, for the local TV for ACBC, for kids, because it's, most, it's more about uh, kids' rights. And and she was very interested. So I don't know. Then happened what my wife passed away, and mm. I just lost contact with anything. I stopped writing for a long while. I was like depressed and, and eating, eating all yeah. the time. Oh yes. yeah. So gr- grieving. Yeah. Yeah, that was for one year since August last year. So it, um, yeah, I, 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 I stopped doing the, everything. So but now I'm coming back. So maybe. I don't know. We'll see what happens with this. I feel like story. I feel like a writer. What a what a writer does is use their own pain to connect with other people's pain that they're not able to articulate to to put into words or to see on a on a in a scene. And what what pushes you? What pushes you to to write things? Why why do you find writing? Why why do you see yourself as a writer? No, I just enjoy. I love writing. I, it's mm. like I don't know. I just sit there and 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 I just love it. I don't know how to explain it. It's mm. it's, it's wonderful. I feel good and and I cry and I laugh and mm. I get into the story and get very involved. I love it. That's why I said I prefer this than teaching or yeah. doing something else because. I don't know. It's, it's, it's just I don't know. Beautiful writing, and, and I, I I get very emotional and yeah. and I'm showing too much. What what do you like to write about? What like um like I I, I believe this is a like a personal question. Um, but what mm. what 
what's something that um how, how do you know when you're writing something that wow this is this is beautiful do you ever write something and you impress yourself uh, what i always do I, I, uh, is it's about human rights that's that's that is what i like most because okay. when i see now what i wrote before even short stories or the theater plays and short movies and it was always about human rights mm. that's what I I, I I i i like most uh, i don't write something like that lake uh, we talked before that the lake house uh, Keanu movie, yeah yeah uh, I, I never write that kind of stuff like movies, uh, love stories and stuff like that. I, I really enjoy about um, yeah, the human rights or kids' rights and yep. what happened, this happened to you, what you should do. And it's like a teaching scene, no? Mm. Uh, like this uh, Men Without Land. Yeah, yeah. In the movies, they give you like tools so you know, okay, I have this right, I have to do this step and then this step, and then I can have the, the paper, whatever. Yep. And uh, the theater play about, uh, was a theater play about a pirate who kidnapped a kid that is becoming this movie and mm. what you should do if you are in this situation. And yeah, the, most, most of the stories about that is, uh, a human right, yeah. Yeah. So, do you find that you write? You write for other people. Do you write to make a message, or do you write for yourself? Do you write for something that affects you? I, I would love to. to while we, we we are talking, I'm just thinking yeah. to, to myself. I should discuss it with my friend because why I'm so obsessed with these topics. You no, know? mm. I was just thinking about that now, now, now. But yeah, it's always to give a message to 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 teach something yeah. that is not fair and how to resolve, how to find an answer to that. Yeah. But I would like to know why I'm so obsessed with that yeah. this topic. Do you think, um, may, maybe, I, I, I don't mean to make uh, any crude connections. Um, do you think... No, there is connection. Yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. With what we were talking be before, there must be a connection. There is. Everything yeah. is a childhood thing. What yeah, happened yeah. in your childhood when, well, when you, you were a kid? All is connected to that moment. Well, it sounds and like your your experience with your sister uh, was very traumatic. Do you think that had any influence yeah, on your message? Hundred percent. I'm yep. totally sure it's all about that moment. That at uh, but in my family was imagine mm. you lost a, a daughter. Oh, my parents. I've got I've got a sister as well, but a twin sister. They were just in silence for ten years. They didn't talk to my sister and me. Yeah. And yeah, it's very traumatic for everybody. Yeah. And especially if your if it's your twin sister is like half of you, that yeah gone. Yeah. So yeah, it is. It was very traumatic for all of us. And yeah, yeah it, it had to be hundred percent a relationship of what happened with you after and your step in, in, in your life. I'm, I'm totally sure about that. Like I was saying, that I, my, my wife was yeah. very sick with this cancer thing. Yeah. So I already, I, I, I was just hospital and this and that, of course, you have to do that. But how I think that saving her, I'm saving my sister. No? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the connection with, like you, we said before, with the vaccine. Mm. Uh, everyone told me, my family, are you crazy? How can you put that in something nobody did that before, that mm. COVID vaccine, soon should lie last year? But I was thinking, uh, if, if I save somebody doing that, being yeah. a rat lab, maybe I'm saving my sister. It's all very um, inside of you, no? Very internal but it's, it's psychological but yeah it, 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 it is very connected to that yeah uh, lost time yeah for sure um pablo just just my last question thank thank you for um giving us your time this is this has been great i've i, I did i did a little no, bit of research on you beforehand and um i'm wondering pablo 
would you would you like to join us for another episode again I, i'm i'd love to keep talking to you uh about about your writing yeah. was personally for me i um I, i've never written anything but for something that's always been in the back of my head i've always been interested in um in, in writing but i haven't fully formed that idea and it's interesting talking to someone that has lived such an interesting and amazing life going from your documentary yeah. to all your life experiences to yeah yeah and and pa- pablo is certainly not the kind of book you want to judge on its cover you know yeah. we look we, we've look we've we've um we've gone really deep here like i wasn't expecting to go as deep as we have but pablo you, you know my heart is really sore and i'm really happy and all these emotions all at once and i've, I've only sp- you know known you for an hour now like it's phenomenal yeah, yeah so i actually i i agree with with ron lee like i'd like i actually i'd surprisingly want to have you back sometime for another episode this was this was amazing i haven't gotten enough out of this i think yeah yeah that, that, exactly <laughs> that's i can't say that in any other better words uh, uh, no, thank you guys. I, 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 in fact, I never answered this way because I did like, I don't know, 600, 1,000 interviews yeah. about the vaccine. <laughs> yeah. And when they asked me, why you did that? Of course, I never say, oh, no, you know, when I was a child, I just say, hey, you have to do that because yeah. it's something yeah. that you have to do. Yeah. I never <laughs> did, I never ever answered the, the truth, let's say. So yeah, and thank, thank you. you. That, no, no, that, that yeah, mean, that thank means, you for sharing with us. That yeah. means a lot to me as well, like to to us, because like um, like yeah, you know, like you said, you didn't tell anyone the the real reason for your your decision. So mm. for us to actually have that knowledge, it's it's sacred in a way. You know, it's yeah, just just thank really you, kind of you. thank thank you for your time. Like we, I. I Oh, I hope, I hope you've enjoyed your time with us. Yeah, as well. honestly, yeah. I hope we've made we're, you feel comfortable. I hope we, we we weren't being inappropriate in any way. Um, I'm just um, no, no, no. <laughs> as long as we're all having fun yeah. and being being ourselves, that's the important part. What, what we're trying to do here on Finding Borders, we're just trying to be a, a genuine bunch of um, hosts who just don't take themselves seriously. Just a just a bunch of young fellows trying to make our way through the world yeah trying yeah. to make our way through the media world eh? <laughs> yeah yeah you, you do, you're doing great thanks all right thank you pablo and um yeah like we'll we'll talk sometime in the future again but you know for now we'll uh we'll leave it here okay, okay. thank you guys we talking in, in another moment right, thank right. you so much thank you thank you pablo bada bing bada boom